I would say it's partially cloudy. Yeah, and uh, the reason for that is uh, we pretty much realized at the end of 10 years that things have moved on, but then at the same time there are potential risks uh, which could upset the whole system as it is or the way the ecosystem has come to evolve as yet. Okay, uh, I would like to be an optimist and I would like to believe that it will get more open, it will get more inclusive. But at the end of the day, what I personally am afraid of is uh, the way different cybersecurity uh, bills are passing on, uh, are being passed by different national governments. And again, uh, the internet, despite its uh, broadness and its refusal to be uh, contained within boundaries, a lot of national governments are taking a very strict or, a, a, let's say, a very narrow view of security on the internet. And um, I think even some of the developed countries have come up with very restrictive uh, cyber uh, security bills. For example, the US passed a bill two weeks ago and it just gives or raises the onus for other developing countries or other developed countries to follow suit. And I think that's a threat. I think it, it might potentially lead to upsetting the entire status quo. Uh, I mean, when the whole Arab Spring uh, thing started and different pop like civilian popular uh, you know, unrest or protest started off, uh, it seemed like a good thing, but then at the end of the day, uh, you don't want chaos ultimately. And, and I think it's, it's a bit unfortunate that some of the countries have not yet been able to settle down into a, uh, into a transition phase, mm -hmm. and that could be potentially upsetting. And the thing with the internet is, uh, you get to see everything. You get to hear a very pluralistic, uh, uh, you have uh, you you start having a very pluralistic view of the society. You get to hear the other lot. You get to have a dialogue, and that might breed more uh, discontention because we uh, the world obviously does not have the resources to let's say equalize living standards or transportation or houses, and and that could upset a lot of fragile economies. I would say an inclusive internet that actually allows people or that uh, that allows people to communicate and at the same time understand each other. Uh, with due respect to their uh, lingual identity, to their national identity and culture. Uh, it is the biggest uh, aspect for us to learn. I mean, it's one of the biggest avenue for us to learn. And I hope it goes that way. And I think what we found out in the past few days is that uh, uh, language and uh, uh, language barrier is still the biggest divide that we are facing. Uh, the whole process being reversed. Uh, I mean, cybersecurity taking uh, going at the top of the agenda, and all of a sudden, uh, governments, irrespective of them saying that they are uh, the most forthcoming when it comes to Article 19 uh, of the UN Charter of Human Rights, and uh, actually denying their own citizens and, and then at the same time trying to point to other governments that they're denying rights, and then it would just be a blame game, and the losers at the end are going to be the common people. I would say it's 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 very explosive at the moment. It, it could it could uh, herald us into a completely new uh, situation, which is much more positive. And then at the same time, it could actually cause uh, cause us to go back. And that, that's that's how I think I can describe it. But I'm optimistic generally. I, I think more people need to come forward. A lot of young people actually need to come forward and own this process. I think we've had enough of like uh, governments and the nation state theory. Uh, I don't think the next century belongs to the nation state. They might kill me over here, but I think the young people should come forward and own the process.